That time of the day again. You know what that means. Boxing time. Now for those who don't know, boxing is the way that I get my fitness in. It's kind of like my outlet, the thing that I have to release. Like whenever you're stressed or whenever you've got deadlines or whenever you just like need that outlet to de-stress, that's what boxing is. Also, I love the sport as well, I love the game. It's, it is really addictive as well. That's the thing about it, it is addictive. But I like that competitive edge because it's only you against another man or you against yourself. So that's the ultimate competition. So that's why I go boxing. Yeah, so today is the boxing day. So I'm gonna be going training, but most important thing is always look to fit in the fitness. Like, it doesn't matter how busy your schedule is, always look to fit it in. So that's what I'm looking to do today. I'm gonna to be most likely hitting two sessions today. Um, one boxing and then one football, but the football is more like a, a mess around thing rather than a serious session. But yeah, it's a nice day as well. So good day to get it in. So this is Paul's dungeon down here. Well, this is where the gym is. It's in the middle of Birmingham. As you guys could see, that was a hard, raw session with Paul Webb, and uh, he does one-to-one -one boxing sessions. If you do want a boxing session, he also trains pro fighters. A lot of the pro fighters that he's got now, I've been um, training with, um, sparring with now and then. So it's always good to get that work in. And Paul really trains you, like really pushes you, beasts you. He puts you through some like emotional sessions. You will, you will question life going through one of his sessions. It's that bad, but. Um, he gets the results, 100%, he gets the results every single time. He knows what he's talking about. He knows the sports science side of things as well, how your body works, the nutritional side, everything. And he also has his own range of supplements as well, which is worth checking out. But he's definitely like, he's, he's a must go to guy. What I gotta do, I gotta race home, have a shower, get some food, and then finish a video that I started last night. Then I'm gonna be featuring on a local business radio show, 101.5, tonight. It's gonna be starting around about four till about six. I might vlog a bit of that as well. Yeah, so we're here again. With yo, Mark. yo, yo. Mark, back. Yo, he's back. in my den. Yep, yep. Mm. About to throw down in the studio. Yeah, buddy. Talking everything business, marketing, and a bit of everything else, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> The education that you get, yeah, it's good. But if you understand the marketplace, you can get ahead in life by just understanding people mm. and understanding what how people operate and the behaviour habits of people, why they tend to be drawn to certain things. Um, all that, it really intrigued me, really interested me. Like, why were certain kids popular? Certain kids weren't popular. Like, why did this happen? I asked a lot of questions. So um, when I was asking these questions, obviously there was a there was a, a pattern of things that would happen to attract people. So I understood a gold Charizard, it gave people status. It's the first thing I noticed, like if you had one of them, you had status. Mm. Like all of a sudden, it wouldn't literally get people girls, the opposite sex, but it would get them status as in like everyone would be like, yeah, do you know someone so has got a gold Charizard? So you've got word, word of mouth, which mm. is giving them social currency. Mm -hmm. right, which is one of the factors people really care about. Mm. So understanding this, like, and understanding the way that the majority of people work in society, even the ones that say that they don't care about all that, they do. Um, a lot of people do in their own way. So really, it's all about giving value. 
and that's what it comes down to how are you giving value because mm. at the end of the day when people go on social media they're going on there for all three different ways it's either to it's, it's, it's either to grab people's attention right, which some people do go there for attention they, mm-hmm. that's what they want mm-hmm. or they're going there for escapism mm-hmm. or they're going there to be sociable or they're going there for something useful utility mm-hmm. something they can use Mm. So it's one one of those three, and you've got to fall into one of those three or two of those three. If you can f- fall into two of those three, then that's even better. There's something called edutainment, which is education mm-hmm. and entertainment at the same time. Mm. If you can fill that, then you're going to win. But, true. but obviously, you've got to be good enough to do it. Yeah. Obviously, people can tune into your show because you entertain, mm. you give information. Mm-hmm. So that's another way. It's just a different platform. Yeah, you're definitely right there. People spend their money on either education or entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, and they say poor people have big TVs and small libraries. Mm. And rich people have normal-sized TV and big libraries. Yeah. Or you can have both, uh, which is what a lot of uh, <laughs> my friends say when I, when I share them. So I'd say a lot of it is literally paying attention. Because a lot of the things, they're there for people. It's understanding your customers. It's, it's understanding what do they do on a day-to-day basis. What is their routine from when they wake up in the morning? Like, what are they doing? Most people reach for their phone before their foot's even touched the ground. Like, that's what they're doing. They're reaching for their phone. And the thing is, when they reach for it, most of the time, they're either going to Facebook or something like that to check it, Instagram, whatever. And they're keeping up to date with someone or something. Mm. Or some people, they read articles. Mm. What articles are they reading? When they're reading these articles, it becomes a habit to read these articles. To the point, if these articles went away, they would feel like something was missing from their life. It's the same as if most people, most people, if you took EastEnders away, it'd be the end of the world. Because they've become a daily habit. Dead enders. Exactly. <laughs> um, so you've got that side of it. It's, it's understanding how to give the most value in a way that people like to receive it. That is the bottom line. Because it doesn't matter what people say about everyone's using Instagram, everyone's using Snapchat. Is your audience using Snapchat? Is your audience using Instagram? That's the thing. Like, it doesn't matter what people say is the best. It's about where they actually are. Mm. Um, and it's understanding that. And then it's, it's having the courage to be the first within your industry to do something that no one else is doing. Because that, if I'm honest, is one of the hardest things to bring into a business. Because when I walk into a business, a lot of the time, and it's understandable because your business is your baby if you're the owner. A lot of the time, business owners don't want to try new things. They want to play it safe. They want to know who else has done it. And that's the first question a lot of people ask. Who else has done this? Mm. And if you want to be a pioneer and you want to grab the most land within a platform, you need to be the first to do it. So you need to understand two t- quick tips. You need to understand what medium do you want to use like, do you want to use video? Do you want to use podcast? Do you want to use graphic design? Do you want to use pictures? Do you, or do you want to use written blogs? Do what, you need to decide what best communicates to your, your audience. Another thing is, how consistent are you going to be with it? Mm. That's another major key. Like, you need to be consistent with it. And that's one of the most important things for a lot of brands. And be personal. Don't try and copy anyone else. Just be yourself. Put your own stamp on it. Obviously, nothing's, nothing's um, original under the sun. Everything has been uh, digested by someone and then converted and put in their own words by somebody else. So there's nothing wrong with getting inspired by people, but don't copy. So that is the, that is the major key behind it. Um, but yeah, that's how I'd answer that. I have you in the, in the studio. Find out a little bit about me. I feel like you've got quite a lot of... Um intriguing uh, ways of doing things I lo- love the fact that you that you people watch and, and you were talking about how you like to identify key kind of um, times like with with the mothers at the, at the school gate you know typically being on their phone uh, between 2.30 and 3 great time to post and engage um, with that audience outside, outside of that is it is it something that you do within your business that you spend you know, regular time, just uh, listening and, and, and keeping an eye out. A lot of people don't understand this. There's a gold mine of information on people's timelines because a timeline is like a dear diary. 
You could literally go through someone's timeline, see exactly what they're feeling on a specific day and what they're going through. What are their likes? What are their dislikes? What are they interested in? What do they share the most often? What do they engage with? What type of comments do they leave? These are the questions you need to be asking. And then once you understand that and you work with those types of focus groups and you collate them all together, then you have an accurate picture of the type of content that you need to be creating to attract those people. And how are you going to nourish those people? But how are you going to give those people something that they haven't already got? That's the key. If you can fill a gap to something that they haven't already got, you're going to win every time. But all of this starts with a social media document. A lot of people, you'd be surprised how many businesses do not have a social media marketing document. No, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy the amount of people that have, have actually got social media platforms set, set up, but they haven't got a document that outlines to the whole team how what content we're going to create, how often do we post, um, what mediums are we going to use, all that type of stuff. They don't have it. It's kind of like a spray and pray kind of mm. approach like if something good's happening then now make some content on the fly and then post it at a random time and then that's it that's as far as it goes and then they just they just hope something happens but it doesn't work like that realistic we, we, we'd all love it to happen like that but it just doesn't work like that so really they need to have a living document and this living document isn't something that you just put on a word document and put it away and you never use it. You need to have this out frequently between your team mm -hmm. and you need to be updating this every three to six months because that's how often social media changes. I'd say every three months because it's literally something's hot one minute, it's a trend and a certain way of putting captions above videos, yeah, it's working after a while, then everyone starts doing, the market's saturated, so no one pays attention to them no more. Now they're watching something else. Now they're watching the ones that don't have captions because everyone else does. Mm. Do you get me? So it changes so often and so frequently and the data is there. <laughs> the thing is the data's there to prove it. It's not just a matter of someone's opinion. It's, it's a matter of the data is there that you can like, give something credible to prove that this actually works, this actually happens, this is what you need to do. So the evidence is there, it's just that people don't always know where to look. Mm. And it's understandable because it's a lot to keep up with social media, it is a full-time job. <laughs> it is a lot to keep up with it and amongst the other roles and responsibilities that people have and with budgets getting squeezed even more and people taking on even more roles, it, to, to ask them to do something else, it, it's a big ask. I guess that's uh, kind of how I would define marketing is, is storytelling. Yeah. So with that in mind, you know, have you got a couple of top tips of, of the best way to tell a story? Well, uh, say if you want to tell, it depends on the, the format that you're telling the story. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're telling a video story, mm. which is one of the things that we specialize in, yep. is um, you want to be thinking the first five seconds, well, first two seconds, depending on the platform that you're using, um, the first five seconds, you want to be thinking, what is the hook? What is going to hook them and make them think, I want to watch the rest of this video? That's the first thing. Now, a lot of people do clickbait, which is basically like, they will they will show something that's maybe a half-naked woman, and then the rest of the video has nothing to do with that half-naked woman, but it made people click on it to see what it was. That's called clickbait. You should never do clickbait. doesn't matter what you're doing. Always be consistent with what you're actually showing. Like, because otherwise it would just lead to disappointment and they never click on any of your stuff again because they, just, they will just think that you're tricking them. Yeah. So, first thing I'd say is make sure it's something that's relevant to the actual video and make sure it's grabbing attention. Now, one of the, there's, there's loads of different strategies, too many that we can go into, but one of the strategies is something called automaticity. Now, this is using colors. You can use things like colors. So, it's, studies have shown that if you use the color red, the colour red universally is recognised to grab attention. That's why we have it at stop signs. That's why we have it um, in certain brands. I mean, anyone that's into branding or does logos or anything like that, you'll understand why fast food shops have red in their logos. Like, it grabs attention. And it's exactly the same with videos. If you have a red tint in your video on the filter, or you have an actual red door or something like that within your post and it's the first frame that someone sees when they're scrolling down, they're going to scroll down, then they're going to stop because it's grabbing attention. Then they're going to click on it and see what's this about. But then you've got to make sure that what they're clicking on after that attention is relevant. And then that's how you build up a story. So that would be the first stage to it. Now the second stage, I would say 100%, you want to be thinking about 
you want to be thinking about context. You want to be thinking about how can I give them more con context. If you're telling a story like most people do. What are the questions? If you think a, if 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 you think a story is unbelievable, the first thing you say, really, when did that happen? Where did it happen? You ask those questions. Do you know everyone does because you you want to confirm that this is a true story. Now, if you give that information before people ask, and you're talking about in the video at such and such at this time on this day and then go into the video but put it in a creative way not literally just standing there saying that <laughs> but put it in a creative way then it's it's building it's building to the climax of a video because a video has to have a climax and a calm down point in order to to really pay attention and hit home and be a story so i'd say you want to do that also i'd probably say um the next thing you want to do is have conflict so conflict is another one. Like most stories, um, they have conflict between a character, whether it's or a character or it's something to do with adversity or something that they're facing or struggling with, mm -hmm. or there's a problem. So you need to give a problem, and then also you've got to have the solution to that problem afterwards. And th there's there's loads of things that you could really go into, but a lot of the, a lot of the other things that you really want to go into is a call to action at the end. Um, not always, but call to action when you can. If you've got a good story, put out a call to action. And that's just basically asking them to do something as a result of them seeing this video. Yeah. But don't overdo it. Because what a lot of people are doing is they're setting up a social media platform and they're putting out just pure call to actions. Where really it should be 80% giving value with no call to actions, 20% call to actions. That's a rough ratio they should be, but really you want to be totally hundred percent giving value and not have any expectations on the marketplace to give you anything back. Like that is the key. Like you can't go into it thinking, I'm going to set up a social media platform, get hundreds of sales, mm. and if it isn't working within the first month, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like you, you, you can't do that. It's just it, it just doesn't make sense. Mm. You've got you've got lead generation what some people call lead generation, bringing in sales. Then you've got branding. They're two different things. It's what a lot of people don't realize. They put out posters and they say, come see us, we're so great, we're so brilliant. We have this new menu, we have this going on, whatever they're saying. But all they're thinking is call to actions. Come and do this, look at this, come and do this. Like that. That's all it is. If that's all you've got, then people aren't gonna pay attention because you're gonna run out eventually. You've got 365 days in a year. Like, you're going to do that for the rest of the year? <laughs> no, it's the, it, eventually, people get bored. Now, this is what I'm talking about, nourishing your audience. You have to give them content that consistently keeps them there because you've got a lot of days in the year and you've got to fill that with content. Mm -hmm. So call to actions. If anything, like you owe them a favour because they've been doing so much for you. <laughs> so that's how you got to think. But you guys switch, you got to switch it around and you got to really like, make them feel as if they owe you. That's the thing. Like you've got to not not in a manipulative way, but you want to outgive them. You want to make sure that you're giving more value. You can't go onto a social media platform and think, "What can I get?" You've got to go on there and think, "What can I give?" And that should be your intentions because your intentions will be will be seen. People see through like someone wanting something and trying to get something from someone. So you've got to be you've got to be hundred percent authentic mm. in everything that you do. Very true. Do you believe the time? Is that time already? Yeah. Sorry, that's me talking. No, it's good. It's <laughs> like, you know, I always love when my guests do all the talking, you know. I just... Uh, Is that a first? Cut them free. No, you, 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 <laughs> there's not many, though, that, that yeah. have got lots to say. Mm. But it's 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 the quality of what you're saying is, is really good. It's not it's not waffle. It's it's good stuff. So Thank you. Yeah, enjoyed that. How do people find out more about you? How do they connect, you know, beyond so, this? So if they're, if they're loving what you're saying and they love what you look like, people are live <laughs> on Facebook Live and... Uh, how do yeah. people connect? If you want to connect with me, um, you can email me. Funny enough, email. <laughs> <laughs> you can email me at theothompson at nourishsocial.co.uk. Yeah, so I just finished up with Mark. Um, it was alright, interview, man. Felt it went alright. So I'm heading back home now. Got to run back home, have some food, get changed, and get ready for football. So it's 10 o'clock now, I'm just getting in. 
gonna chill out time to relax and then get some sleep video tomorrow see what happens <laughs>